I recently got the Mammoth Mezco 112 Fantastic Four box set, and it got me thinking, who made the best FF figures of all time? Hey y'all, welcome back to Carbon Scoring, the best place for comics, history, and action figures. The Fantastic Four are the foundation of the Marvel Universe. They rewrote the playbook for all of comics with stories of cosmic proportions while still focusing on the character's humanity. The dysfunctional yet loving family dynamic set the book apart from everything else on the stands, truly earning the moniker of the world's greatest comic magazine. And it has certainly been the inspiration for some of the greatest action figures ever produced. Legend has it Marvel publisher Martin Goodman was playing golf with DC publisher Jack Leibovitz when Leibovitz bragged about the sales of his new superhero team book, The Justice League of America. Goodman instructed his nephew, Stan Lee, to come up with a JLA clone. Dejected and frustrated with what he considered a dead-end career in comics, Lee considered quitting until his wife Joan suggested that before he gave up, he should write a book that he'd want to read. Enter the King, Jack Kirby. In the 1950s, Kirby had created a group of four adventurers in matching jumpsuits called the Challengers of the Unknown. The truth behind who created what and where the various influences came from is irrelevant at this point. The 102 issues Stan and Jack produced of the Fantastic Four are widely considered the greatest comic run of all time. And while I love my Mego figures, well, sort of. It's time to look at the good, the bad, and the Alba. I mean, the ugly Fantastic Four figures. The FF haven't always had, you know, the best experience in the movies. But they have fared better in animation, beginning with their 1967 cartoon. Then, the 80s version featuring Herbie the Robot instead of the Torch. And finally, onto the 90s version of our heroes. That 90s cartoon provides us with our first version of the team from Toy Biz. I'll admit, I didn't watch the 90s Fantastic Four cartoon. It certainly wasn't held in the same regard as the 90s Spider-Man or the 90s X-Men animated series. But they did produce a really classic line of Fantastic Four action figures. And you have to remember, these were the days when these were marketed solely to kids. The adult collector market was just in its infancy with Spawn toys kind of coming up. And so they had to have some kind of gimmick to get kids to buy these toys. And each of the four of these really demonstrates that. Let's start with Ben Grimm, the thing. And I love this thing figure mainly for his size. He really scales nicely with the other members of the team. The thing is not like a huge giant. Now we're going to see some thing figures later in this video that don't go with that. But I really think this is more how Jack Kirby designed the character. Now he has his classic clobber in time action. So if you simply put your thumb on this little feature here on the back and twist his body, he is going to really give you some great clobbering. And that's a simple but effective action feature that doesn't take anything away from the sculpt or the look of the character. Same thing here with the Invisible Woman. There's obviously only one thing you really want out of an Invisible Woman figure, and that's for her to be transparent. And this is a great one. It's a good sculpt underneath. It's interesting. This plastic is obviously different from the other plastics. It's a little bit more tacky as the years have gone on, but a great Invisible Woman. Now, Reed is one that really is pretty special. So I read, uh, I think in Toy Fair magazine, that this was the most costly figure to produce in the line because the stretchy arms have to be out of a different material. I'm not going to torque on them too much because I don't want to ruin this, you know, 30-year-old figure. But the whole idea of having his stretchable arms is just such a cool concept. And again, when he's just sitting on your shelf, he looks like a great Reed Richards. But if you're a kid, you can really get into this stretch arm strong type of play. But the one that takes the cake is the Human Torch here. You can see his chest is a little bit broader, and that's because it has to accommodate his action feature. There's a little flame here on his back, and you can see some holes right here. But if you pull on the flame, yeah, he's got like a flint mechanism in there, 
and it sends that fire right through his chest. So cool. So these are total winners in my book. Classic looks with cool toys. Jumping from cartoonish 5-inch toys to 6-inch hyper-articulated action figures, Marvel Legends represented a quantum leap forward. The Fantastic Four were clearly a priority for Marvel Legends as they began the line, as both the Human Torch and Thing appeared in Series 2 and were quickly followed by Mr. Fantastic in Series 5. Now, it's interesting, both Thing and Torch have variants. One was a running change, the other was an actual packaged variant. This torch, I think, is probably the most consistent John Byrne-looking torch that we've had produced. I love the lines that imitate Kirby's artwork, but they're displayed in a way that really matches John Byrne's style. Plus, I don't think of Johnny as being like a hugely powerful as far as being a muscular figure. And so this thin body, this more Spider-Man-like frame, I think fits him very, very well. Now, if you look closely on his chest... You can see there used to be a four symbol here. The very first figures that came out in the line didn't have that. It was a running change that later they added a flaming four. I didn't like that because I didn't think it looked like Burns' artwork, and so I tried to rub it off. But my very first one I have on display with my John Byrne Fantastic Four figures. Thing actually came as a variant in his trench coat and hat, a very classic look from the comics. His original figure was one of the better ones. I really love the shape of his shoulders, and that head sculpt is great. It was a little frustrating because even brand new, the coloring of the plastic kind of went from orange to a much more yellow up top, and I have several of these, and they all look that way. But having this one in the trench coat really, really does add to the flavor of the thing. Mr. Fantastic when his first promo shots appeared, had a different head sculpt from this. I don't love this head sculpt. It seems a little bit too thin for, for Mr. Fantastic. And of course, the articulation is just, you know, absolutely bonkers with these huge ball shoulders and an early attempt at butterfly joints. He did come with stretchable attachments that could go on, but overall, not the strongest figure. And of course, we don't have the Invisible Girl because she didn't appear in this classic Jack Kirby costume until Hasbro had taken over the line. But this was the era of crazy pack ends and accessories, and Mr. Fantastic came with half of a Fantastic car, which I doubled up to make the FF's classic flying bathtub. Okay, so I might have been a little harsh on the Fantastic Four's movie legacy earlier. Let's check out Toy Biz's figures from their first feature film. I really felt like this movie was so close to being good. The casting for the FF I thought was really great, particularly Michael Chiklis's characterization of the thing and Captain America himself, Chris Evans, as the Human Torch. And Toy Biz was killing it with their movie figures at this time. Again, these are before the days of modern face scanning technology, facial print, and yet these things look exactly like their on-screen counterparts. Let's take Reed, for example. Uh, I'm going to mispronounce his name, but I believe it's Owen Grunfeld, uh, who was the actor who played Reed. Another, I think, inspired casting, and he really did kind of capture the sort of meek, you know, behind-himself scientist of Reed Richards. This figure did come with a bunch of detachable parts where you could stick, you know, bendy types of things on there, and it worked pretty well, and it certainly was movie accurate. Torch is great, and this human torch will work in any comic display that you have because it's just a great translucent flame on figure. And there's something about the fact that all this translucent plastic is there that really kind of keeps away from how distracting those old Toy Biz ball hips were. But once again, this is a 20 plus year old figure, but if you press the little button on his back, he still lights up with his flame on effect. Really, really cool that that still works. Same thing can be said for this gorgeous thing figure. Just look at the sculpting detail of this thing. I mean, it really is Chickless come to life as Ben Grimm. And it, oh, there it was. If you can hear this, whenever he stomps his foot, there's a sound effect 
that happens right there. So cool and definitely worthy of some aggressive clobbering time. And finally, when it comes to likeness, this is a gorgeous Jessica Alba figure. And I do love how good the face is, but I think what really separates this character is the way that they made her invisibility powers work. Instead of having one leg made of, you know, colored plastic and then separating to a clear plastic at the knee, they actually sculpted both the arms and the legs out of clear translucent plastic and then used the paint effects to slowly grade down to create the effect of her turning invisible. It's so much better than if had there had been just like sharp delineation right there at the joints. Really, really sweet. But if you're somebody who doesn't like to look at Jessica Alba, they had you covered on that as well with a fully transparent version. Hey, you've made it this far. You're clearly one of us. So go ahead and subscribe to Carbon Scoring because we're bringing you videos like this every week. In the year 2000, Marvel launched the Ultimate Universe, with Brian Michael Bendis at the helm of Ultimate Spider-Man and Mark Miller writing Ultimate X-Men. These two heavyweights then joined forces to co-create Ultimate Fantastic Four. While these figures weren't exactly marketed as Ultimate Fantastic Four figures, it's very clear when you lay them out that they're wearing the Brian Hitch-designed Ultimate FF costumes. And these are some of the most difficult to find Fantastic Four figures as they were released in Toy Biz's Fantastic Four Classics line from 2006. You know the one that I'm talking about. The one that has that incredible Dragon Man figure in it. So I was lucky because I pre-ordered these because I never saw them on store shelves. Now, Blue-Eyed Benjamin is a really great classic figure. Again, terrific proportions. He's a little bit bigger than the rest of the team, but that's okay. He was drawn bigger in the Ultimate Comics. He's got a classic black belt with blue pants, and he does have an action feature where uh, I think it's, it's clobbering time. Absolutely. So get those fists up and pound down just like you expect. Johnny is another one that has an action feature. You know, here is your flame off human torch and you can really see the design elements of the ultimate costume here with the v-shaped black and kind of the extra padding on the arms but johnny can actually transform into his flame on version by simply pressing down on his head with this alternative top so his head just bounces right down and you can put this on here i think this looks terrible but i totally get where they were coming from with it this is truly one of the best Susan Storm figures. Now, in the Ultimate Comics, all of the team was much younger. And so Sue was, you know, a late teen, early 20s. And this really has that kind of attractive younger female vibe. Her pose is a little bit limited because she's in kind of that classic female contrapposto stance, which does kind of limit what you can do with these simple V hips. But that head sculpt is so nice, and she does look great in this costume. She also came as a completely translucent variant, and I love that one so much, I have it on display down in my John Byrne FF display. Now, the most interesting one, though, is Reed Richards, because as I mentioned, the Ultimate FF were much younger, and that included Reed, but somehow they put the old head with the graying temples on the young Reed body. It was a really missed opportunity to give us a different kind of Reed Richards figure. Kind of always love that paint wash back there. But maybe it's for the best because Reed actually ended up becoming the biggest villain of the entire Ultimate Universe as the Maker, who is still reigning havoc in Marvel Comics to this day. The John Byrne era on FF is my personal favorite. It was the one I read as a kid and formed the foundation of my love for these characters. I'm even lucky enough to own Byrne's original art for that all-important Marvel corner box. And look, these retro cardback figures in the John Byrne era costumes are truly terrific. But my Byrne display required five different figures from five different lines. As I mentioned, the torch came from Series 2 of Marvel Legends way back in 2002. 
Susie is actually the translucent ultimate invisible girl from 2006 FF Classic Subline. The 2004 Fantastic Four box set thing had a more Mike Waringo head sculpt, but it's on that Series 2 body, and those shorts are spot on. The super tall, fully stretched out Mr. Fantastic came from an early Hasbro Legends series in 2007. And everybody's favorite fifth Beatle, She-Hulk, was a 2007 San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. Whew, that's a lot of effort, but in my eyes... Perfection. But it turns out the greatest set of Marvel Legends FF figures came from an unexpected place. Each of these pieces of plastic perfection were exclusive to Walgreens drugstores. It is truly hard for me to believe that there are actually better Fantastic Four figures than these right here, but we're going to see them here pretty soon. This is the Walgreens set, where each one of these figures was released as an exclusive through Walgreens drugstores. And what that meant was I had to search every Walgreens in my town constantly to try to complete this set. As a matter of fact, I was thinking back on it, and I'm pretty sure that I got each one of these at a different Walgreens. I remember finding the thing at the Walgreens near where my kids have piano practice, uh, Johnny, I found at the Walgreens near the hospital. Reed was at the Walgreens that's the closest one to my house. And Sue, I found at the Walgreens near my church. So I stormed Walgreens for months looking for all these figures. But let me tell you, it was worth it. This thing figure has the best body sculpt that we've seen thus far. It's one where it's big it's hulking. It has an incredible paint application with that black wash in there really bringing out his rocky texture. He comes with multiple head sculpts, and we've gotten some other head sculpts that you could add to it, but I really like this classic one. And of course, he's got the Jack Kirby shorts right there. Torch is another winner. Again, I'm a sucker for translucent plastic, particularly when it comes to the Human Torch, but this is one where it's a little bit opaque enough that it's not just see-through, and that helps to hide the joints that are still underneath. It's not like some of the translucent figures that we get where all you can see is the mechanism that holds everything together. This one is much better than that. His head is a little bit more translucent, but that's great because it gives a little bit more of a lighting effect for the figure. Reed is just absolutely perfect. I mean, that is just a straight out of the comics Reed Richards head sculpt. And I love his frame. He seems long but thin, a little muscular, but not really super heroic in proportions. Of course, he comes with fantastic bendy wire appendages. And in a nod to the classic comics, he came with the ultimate nullifier, the device that allowed Reed to defeat Galactus in his very first appearance. Equally as awesome is Susan Storm Richards, the Invisible Girl. Just like what we saw with the Jessica Alba movie figures, they took translucent plastic all the way down the arm and used the paint to create the effect. So yes, her hand is invisible, but you can see that the invisibility power is running up her arm. Now we've had several other head sculpts. This is maybe not my favorite Sue head sculpt, but it certainly goes hand in hand with the rest of the group. And then here is the maniacal robot Herbie in all of his frightening glory. Ah! These same sculpts were repainted to match the darker colored costumes of Dan Slott's run on the title. Plus, we got teen versions of Reed and Sue's kids, Franklin and Valeria. Hey Hasbro, with these two new teen molds, you're halfway to where you need to be to produce power pack figures. Now it's time to take a look at that Mezco 112 Silver Age set. Nine alternate heads means you can create virtually any look from across the FF's history. This set was certainly pretty pricey, but inside the retro-inspired tin are layers upon layers of accessories, from alternate hands to display stands, from additional clothing accessories to props like steel beams and lamp posts. So here are the figures right out of the packaging, and as you can see, just lined up here, all four together, they look really nice. I mean, they really do look like a team. The matching jumpsuits, the way that the thing's belt kind of repeats the Fantastic Four logo, really, really nice. 
but there's definitely some limitations to these figures that we're going to explore as we take a look at them. Now, the thing is maybe my favorite one out of all. He's probably the best realized figure. First off, he's much more Kirby-sized. He's not that mammoth thing. He's more in line with the human scale of the other figures, and I like that. I love his rocky look, and I really like that heavy brow. You know, that's kind of the classic... George Perez, John Byrne, and even Jack Kirby thing with that heavy, rocky brow. He has nice articulation. You know, he's got a little bit of a ball shoulder. The ball of the shoulder loses some of the rocks here, which you can see it. It, it sort of stands out a little bit with that, but it's rocky everywhere else, and the cloth jumpsuit, the cloth shorts are pretty nice. Overall, a really good figure. You can switch him into his trench coat. Uh, he comes with a Yancey street sign. There's all kinds of posing possibilities for this, but overall, probably the strongest just base figure out of the group. Now, Susie is on a really good frame. You can see that she's more petite and shorter than the guys. And in fact, the guys are kind of, Johnny and Reed have different bodies, so they actually have a different style, which which helps. You know, it really differentiates each character. But this is where the cloth costumes start to give us some trouble because there's no real way to utilize Susie's invisibility powers. Sure, she comes with different heads that just basically give different expressions, and she's got some, like, you know, invisibility power accessories that she comes with, but she's just a six-inch doll. You know, I mean, she's in this great cloth costume. The colors are perfect. But that's kind of the end of where she's going to be. Same thing really goes for Johnny. Now, I'm happy to have a flame-off Johnny Storm figure in his costume. And this looks really good. He's got some cool alternate head sculpts as well. Uh, but he looks great just standing here in the FF costume. And there's times where I like them like this. Like, not necessarily in action, all flamed up. But what Mezco decided to do for Johnny for his flame effects is they gave us an alternate head, but it's just the head. It, it's not even the neck. And there's no other, like, flame on the suit. I mean, he's got some flame effects that can come out of his hands, but that's not right. That just kind of looks terrible. Now, it's neat because it actually does light up. You can put the battery in there, and you can get it to, to light up when you put it on. But I'm never going to use that. I mean, he's he's always going to be displayed as flame off Johnny Storm. I like it, but definitely a limitation. Now, Reed is actually really good. He's a little grumpy in this head sculpt, but his body is great. He's a little bit beefier than Johnny because he's older, and that comes across. And these suits fit really, really well. And like I said, they're gorgeous in their colors, and that logo is very very retro, very, very much like when Jack Kirby originally designed it. Now, Reed is pretty cool. Thing may be the best base figure, but when you talk about the utilization of their powers, Reed is definitely the best one. So here's Reed in full stretch, and, and this is definitely the winner out of the bunch, because not only is this character super long when you take a look at it, but all of these appendages have bendy wire. So there's just almost unlimited amount of play that you can have with this play and posing. Even the legs, the lower legs that you add on can bend. And so I'm not sure how well he's going to stand up like this, but at least for messing around and getting him into some crazy stretchy poses, that's going to be really cool. And it's all cloth. See, this is, this is where the cloth didn't actually hurt the ability to make a really cool figure. So I imagine there's going to be some toy photographers who have a super good time with this one. And I imagine I could come up with some cool stuff for it too. The set also came with Mezco's version of Herbie, the crazy robot. And while they did take some liberties on this, it's still fairly true to the original design. I particularly like the head, which actually has some googly eyes. They, they kind of move up and down a little bit. You can see it a little bit better there. Uh, articulated arms, he's got articulated rocket pods, but a couple of cool features. You can pull down his front, and there's a computer pad with a screen right there, and he also comes with some butt controls as well. So here's to you, Herbie. I would have never guessed it, but I actually think Marvel Select has made the very best set of Fantastic Four figures.
The Thing was the first of the Marvel Selects released back in 2020. He represents a more contemporary take on the costume design with the long pants and boots look. Also, he is huge, much more in the style of modern artists who tend to draw him as massive, but this does make him really stand out from his other team members in a display. Unfortunately, all that mass comes at a price, as the hip joint on mine snapped, and the figure is so heavy, I can't seem to glue it back together. The Human Torch appeared next, coming out in 2021. Like many of our previous Torch figures, he utilizes a red transparent plastic to emulate his flame effects, but he does have sculpted lines on the body and orange highlights as well. The base that this figure comes with is spectacular, featuring multiple ball joint connections, allowing Johnny to appear to be soaring on a stream of flame. The extra hands are some of the coolest we've ever gotten, showcasing different uses of the torch's fire powers. And, as an added bonus, you can pop off the head and the Fantastic Four symbol on the chest and replace them, creating an entirely new figure. This one representing the original Human Torch from the 1940s, Jim Hammond. After a two-year wait, Mr. Fantastic finally came out in the summer of 2023. As a base figure, I think it looks quite good. Strong and muscular, but not overly super heroic in its proportions. The head sculpt is terrific, and I'm glad they leaned into the gray hair instead of just a splash at his temples. But things really get interesting when you add all of his elastic effects. We've seen elongated necks, arms, and torsos before on other figures. It's the lower body, circled around into a contorted cylinder that sets this apart, and represents all those times Reed would use his powers to trap their enemies. And this past fall, we finally finished our Fantastic Four with the fabulous Invisible Girl. Susie has the paint on translucent plastic that we've seen on the very best versions of her character, and the invisible force field effects she came with here were outstanding as well. But the thing that sets this apart is we finally get a head sculpt worthy of the milfiest milf in the Marvel Universe. I hope my love for the FF came out in this video, but you tell me what your favorite version of Marvel's first family is. We are committed to not just giving you a review of new figures, but providing a deep dive look into these characters that we have grown up with. So as always, for the best in comics history and action figures, subscribe to Carbon Scoring.